Hey everyone, it's Ollie and Jack, and in this video we are talking bones. It's commonly thought that bones are an unchanging structure in the body, a bit like the framework in a building, but this isn't the case. Bones, just like other tissues in the body, are actually a living tissue and they can adapt. And this means that just like muscles, bones can become stronger and more resilient. Now, if we don't stress our bones enough, they can also become weaker and more fragile as we get older. Now, a condition associated with getting older is osteoporosis, and in Greek, this means porous bone, or really put simply, a reduction in bone mineral density. So this means that we're more likely to get fractures. However, the good news, as we just mentioned, is that bones are adaptable. So how do we make our bones more resilient? Well, we can use medications, which many people may have heard, such as prolia injections, or calcium and vitamin D supplementation can help in that process. However, exercise is an excellent way to do this. However, mate, not all exercise will True. improve bone density. Exercise has to be of a sufficient intensity to stress our bones enough and force them to adapt. The two best evidenced ways of improving our bone density with exercise are high intensity resistance training and impact loading. Okay, now a landmark study that actually showed that you could improve your bone mineral density through exercise was called the Lift More Child. And what it did was it took two groups of women with an average age of 58 who had osteoporosis and they put them into a light or low intensity resistance training regime, which basically did a lot of body weight and light dumbbell exercises, but then also put another group of women into a high intensity resistance training program, which consisted of heavy weights and some big movements, which we're gonna show you right now. Alrighty, so we are going to show you through four of the movements that the high intensity resistance training group performed through their eight months in the Lift More trial. It's important to note that they did the three resistance training exercises with a barbell, but you can use any type of weight such as kettlebells, dumbbells, a medicine ball, as long as it's providing a high resistance. Okay, let's run through the three resistance training exercises and then we'll show them the jumps at the end as well, mate. So the first one, which is a great movement for loading up the spine, is the deadlift. Basically picking up dead weight from the ground. Ollie's performing this with kettlebells, which are providing a lot of resistance for him. Excellent, mate. Okay, one of the other exercises they performed was an overhead press. And you can replicate this easily with a set of dumbbells like Jack's got here. Pressing up over your head with a heavy weight is a great way of getting some loading through the skeleton in your upper body. Okay, so there's an upper body exercise, but another lower body exercise they did was the squat, which you've all probably done or heard of. So Ollie's using a medicine ball, they used a barbell, but once again, you just need to load yourself up enough to get to that high intensity. Now this is really good for loading up the spine, but also the lower body, so the leg bones, our big femurs there. Perfect. So that's the resistance training exercises. Next, they performed a jump for some impact loading. Now jumping is a really good one because when you land, you get a lot of ground reaction force traveling up your skeleton. Yeah. So it's a great one for improving your bone density throughout your body. Now they used a bar in the study where, to help them basically get up a little bit higher so that the drop was a bit bigger, improving the resistance that goes up through the bones. That's right, that's the exercises from the Lift More trial. Back to you, Jack and Ollie. After eight months of the exercises that you've just seen, the high intensity resistance group actually saw a 3% increase in their bone mineral density. And that is very significant when it comes to improving bone mass, because the natural course with aging is to see a decline in our bone mineral density. And interestingly, that's actually what was found in the low intensity exercise group. Now it's important to note that the low intensity resistance training wasn't bad for the people and it wasn't the cause of their decline. It was just that the stress that they applied to their bones was not adequate enough to stimulate bone growth. And really importantly, we should note that the high intensity resistance training did not have any adverse effects on the people. So it is good to say that it is safe for you given proper and adequate progressive loading. 
So to summarize, bones are adaptable and you can improve your bone mineral density with the right type of exercise. So Ollie and I, as physios, have our clients perform high intensity resistance training, but we make sure that they start at a manageable level and slowly build up their weight to a high intensity over time. We hope you are convinced of the benefits of exercise for bone mineral density. If you have osteoporosis or reduced bone density, why not get some guidance and start a resistance training program? See you later.